All righty, welcome back from the episode of Two Plane Sports. Today, I'm back. Uh, Jose and Brandon held it down. Uh, but today, we're going to be talking about OU making top eights for a couple of elite players, uh, talented players in the 2025 class. And I feel like I say this every every year, but I can't believe we're already talking 2025 and a lot of 2026 offers. It's kind of hard to wrap your mind around it. it. I feel like we were just talking about 2022 and 23 the other day. So we're going to be talking a couple top eights that OU made uh, for some elite players. This is going to be a shorter video, but before we do, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn the notification bell on. Uh, we're 20 subscribers away from 6,200, so help us get there. Hit the subscribe button. Like I said, turn the notification bell on. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Apple, Spotify, and TikTok. Everything's linked in the description below. All right, let's get into it. So the first guy that OU made a top eight for is uh, Jonte Newman out of Cypress, Texas. Um, he's an offensive tackle, six foot four, 275 pounds, uh, pretty athletic player. Um, he his top eight consists of let me pull it up real quick is Tennessee, Alabama, Texas AM, Houston, Oklahoma, Texas, Southern California, and TCU. My biggest takeaway at that top eight, and I think we're gonna start seeing this more, is the fact that Houston made a top eight um for a player like John T. Newman. Is John T. Newman, you know, a five star, the number one player in the class? No. But he's a four-star, top 250 player, like number 15 offensive lineman, interior offensive lineman in the country from Texas. I think Houston being in the Big 12, not that they're going to win all the recruitments, I think will be a thorn in Oklahoma's side and Texas' side and and A&M's side. Um, But John T. Newman's a talented player. Oklahoma made his top eight coming off of a recent visit to Texas. Jose, what do you think? Yeah, this is a enormous kid. He's six six two ninety. At least that's what he he lists himself as. Okay, then think, yeah, two four seven must be wrong. Yeah, two four seven has him being a little lighter. If I look, if I remember correctly, I mean, yeah, you said it, like 15, 20 pounds lighter. So bigger guy. Um, probably safe to assume he'll get over three hundred by the time he enrolls to whatever college he goes to. And I agree, it it's definitely a different top eight than we're used to. You're seeing, I mean, you still see your big schools like Oklahoma and Texas, Alabama still, that brand is still very much alive, even though they have been having some issues with their guys leaving to the portal. But then you still see, you'll, you're just going to see new schools like Houston and TCU popping up, especially for those guys in the state of Texas. So that recruiting Texas is going to be much harder, not just because, you know, UT just had a good season. And A and M is you know, still going to do A and M stuff and, and trying to get their recruits, but those schools, TCU, Houston, even SMU, I would not be surprised surprised if we start seeing their logo pop up on some of these top eights for these elite recruits in the state of Texas, since they will be ACC in the ACC uh, moving forward. It, for a guy like this, he does play left tackle. You know, you as much as some people may not like it, like Coach B has has the method to his madness is not always going to be the sexiest recruits when you look at their ranking but he knows what he's looking for I think anyone that tells you that when they're watching film and they have uh, of offensive linemen and they have sloppy hands or bad footwork unless they played offensive linemen like Gabe Iker did probably going to take it with a grain of salt personally but you do what you got to do um and, and forming your opinion on these kids I personally think he's pretty good but again, with offensive line, we talk about it all the time on this channel. It's tough to really know how good they are unless you know exactly what you're looking at at that position. Even I think even sometimes they're miss, um, what's it called misranked or you know either they're too high or too low, and it's mainly because of how big they are compared to the kids that they're playing at at the high school level. So they look they could look a little bit more dominant than they may be or doesn't translate as well as it's expected going to. The college level but it is a left tackle a guy that at some point will be necessary for any program especially Oklahoma when you look at their their room right now you've got Jake Sexton who's the expected left tackle next year and then some inexperience there behind him we'll see what happens obviously if he were to go down with an injury or once you know trash time happens in those early games where there's opportunity for younger guys maybe someone comes in 
and shows that he can be the next left tackle for Oklahoma, but wouldn't be a bad, a bad get for OU in the 2025 class. Definitely not. And with, I, I do agree with you guys on, on both uh, your Houston take and SMU take with being in a bigger conference helps, but for, for Newman, I mean, the, the, the driving distance from Cypress, Texas to Houston is like 25 miles. So that could be playing a big factor in this too. And just wanting to remain, you know, really, really close to home if, if he does end up with Houston. Um, but you know, he's, he's a, he's a, he's a real good versatile athlete. It would be a, a, a great addition to this class. He was a unanimous district, all state selection, or whatever. He's, it's gonna bring a lot. He's got he's got a lot of a lot of things you like. Great size, yeah. I mean, I'm all about it. And you know, something else I've been looking at. And granted, I'm gonna butcher this name. So one of his teammates, um, Oklahoma offered is another offensive tackle is uh, Ryan Fauge, F O D J E. He's from Cyprus Bridgeland High School. He's a three star. Oklahoma was the first school to ever offer him. And they are kind of going about their recruitment as a pair. Uh, they went to Texas together, and that's where Faje, I'm probably butchering his name, and I apologize, picked up his uh, Texas offer this past weekend. So they both have Texas offers. Now they're going to visit uh, A&M, and they're going to visit Houston together. And you'd like to see that both of them would go take a visit to Oklahoma at some point, um, whether that's it, – it's not this weekend, obviously, but – it seems like hopefully Oklahoma could snag them to, uh, you know, get them to come up for the March event or, or something like that. But they kind of seem like that they might be a pair um, kind of come together. But Oklahoma has a little bit of a leg up that they, they were the first ones to ever offer his teammate, you know, out of any school. Um, he's a fast rising kid as well. Um, so Oklahoma is recruiting both the players. And I kind of wonder if it will come down. They will be a pair and, and kind of go where the other one goes. I'm not saying that they will, but it, it is interesting that they're traveling and visiting these schools together. Um, it kind of makes sense, though. If you live in the same town and play for the same school, why don't you go visit with your with your teammate? So that's just an interesting point. That's some good digging, yeah. I like that. And Oklahoma's, if you look at the numbers, I don't know the exact amount of offers they have out for offensive linemen, but just – like looking at it and seeing how all these kids are sent, you know, tweeting out their offers to Oklahoma feels like they're offering way more offensive linemen this cycle than they did in the last cycle. And I would assume it's very intentional because they do need to start adding more, you know, high school talent. Um, that's the only position where you look at for the last couple of years and just assume that they're going to pull from the portal. And that's not really the MO for any other position. Uh, and I, I think you'll see an emphasis, um, especially in the offensive line, this this recruiting cycle. They're going to have to because Oklahoma has been put in a really rough spot with literally replacing every single starting offensive lineman. And in theory, you'd like to avoid that. But sometimes, you know, the NFL and everything else now in the world of NIL, things, things change quickly. So um, moving on, staying along the trenches, moving on the other side of the ball. Oklahoma made a top eight for 2025 four-star defensive lineman Trent Wilson. Um, according to 247, you might have better you know, measurables, 6'3", 270 pounds. As you pointed out before we started recording, Jose, he actually just transferred into the St. Francis Academy where Caleb Williams once went and played his high school football. His top eight consists of Oklahoma, Penn State, Ohio State, Tennessee, Texas A&M, Florida, Maryland, and Florida State. Comparing that top eight versus uh, Newman's top eight, this is a little bit more of the traditional um, power teams, you know, premier college football programs that you would expect for a player like him. Um, not so much focus in the state of Texas. Um, with this, Oklahoma being in the top eight, Wilson being up from the Maryland area, he's very familiar with Penn State. It seems like Penn State has at least – made some moves in his recruitment, but Oklahoma is set to host him um, in early March. It was a March 9th, first weekend of March or whatever. Um, so Oklahoma is set to host him. He's a talented player. Brandon, what do you think? Yeah, he's fast. That's, I think we were watching this tape before we started it. I think that's that really popped off, uh, I think, right away for me at least. he's For a guy that big, he moves very, very well. And, you know, he's – He's a guy that's ranked a little higher than Newman. I think he's a, he might be a little more, more uh, highly sought after. He's you know top 150 on 247. He's top 110 composite. So he's I think he's going to be 
borderline top 100 by the time it's all said and done. He's a top 10 D line uh, composite. I think this of, of of the two cats we talked about, this is the one I would prefer if you can only get one. Um, but there, there's, there's, there's a lot to like here. He's physical fast. He's, he's in the backfield a lot. He's got all the tools you need. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about the, the potential of, of, of this kid. Yeah. And his makeup just physically is ideal defensive lineman. I think something that a lot of people get caught up in is, you know, how, how much they weigh. You always hear, well, if he's a defensive lineman, he should be 300 pounds, especially in the interior. I mean, even if you look at the NFL, that's not the case. There are guys that are 280, 290 and doing just fine, excelling, being all pros, you know, doing very well at at the highest level of, of football, let alone college football. You're going to see even fewer of those guys doing well. Um, but Trent, like Brandon said, super fast. I think that, that's the first thing that if you if you go in and check out um, his huddle, if you find any other tape on him and, you know, watch a few of his games, his speed pops pops out off like he has a very quick first step i think that that alone will help him get more and more recognition as he starts going to more camps you know going to his senior year would not be surprised if he if he has a big season next year and has a lot of um, big time moments and camps here throughout the offseason if he gets into the top 50 even because he is a defensive lineman and those guys can shoot up the rankings really quickly just off a few really good camps. Um, what I like in, in where Oklahoma stands here is, yes, Penn State has made and is probably currently seen as the favorite because he has visited over there. He has visited um, them three times, most recently their junior day last weekend. But Oklahoma offered him here over the last couple of days and quickly made his top eight. Todd Bates clearly has made an impact immediately in this in the short amount of time he's he's really gotten to know him um so as long as that relationship still stands you know i think everyone's always going to have in their back of their minds especially for defensive linemen nil i'm not really ever concerned about it because if oklahoma feels like it's it's a necessary opportunity they're gonna do it and you you put together a really good class in in the 2024 year and 2024 cycle these kids see that as long as they go out there and perform, which they will, because Oklahoma is going to need some of those guys to perform at some point in the season. It makes it that much more appealing for, for kids like Trent and in, and other guys in the 2025 class to really take Oklahoma seriously along that position. And that, that group with Todd Bates and, and Miguel Chavis, you know, there's, this is probably going to be one of the longer recruitments if I were to guess given that he's a top 100, you know, fringe top 100 defensive lineman. These are never easy by any means. If you see a guy commit super early and somehow it sticks, that means he saw something that he really loved at that university. Either it was close to home or he had a really good connection, you know, and for some it could be that they got a gigantic bag and that's fine. But I would assume that this is going to be one that comes down to the wire and wouldn't be surprised if, it's a December timeline where you see a final, a real final decision get made for a guy like this. Could be. And another thing I don't want to discount is obviously with Penn State is definitely seemed to make some moves here, but I don't want to discount uh, Maryland. I mean, St. Francis Academy, it's kind of a pipeline to, to Maryland. And I, Maryland's hosted him before for visits. Um, I don't necessarily want to discount. Granted, I don't honestly believe that Maryland's the ultimate you know, destination, but Maryland has secured some highly rated recruits because of that DMV area. So Maryland and Penn state in my mind are probably the two biggest um, competitors in his recruitment, but obviously he's interested in Oklahoma considering, like you said, he just got a recent, recent offer and now making the top eight. But again, I, I think Oklahoma's in a great spot at, at least. I mean, you want to be in a top eight, obviously you took top four, maybe top five is a little bit more serious, but Eight's, eight's not bad. You're you're obviously in the running for him at this point. It's not like a top 25. I was say top eight is better than the top 12s and top 11s that we've talked about before. For sure. That, mar- that marcher is going to be important to setting up an official visit because I agree with you guys. Top eight isn't as nice as the top four, but these guys do have unlimited official visits that they can take no, now. That's, that's 100% true. So that, that's a big deal. 
But that's all I've got. Um, unless you guys have anything else, I will turn it over to Brandon for the end of video. Yeah, we'll just do it easy here. I, I picked Trent Wilson as mine. If, like, if, if you could only get one of these two uh, athletes, um, so that'll be the end of video challenge. Of the two we uh, of the two we discussed, which one would you prefer if you could only land one? All right. Well, you heard them. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Remember, we're only 20 subscribers away from 6,200. Help us get there. Turn the notification bell on. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Apple, Spotify, and TikTok. Everything's linked in the description below, and we'll catch you guys next time.